So if you're starting rotations next semester or the next semester, it's just good information to have. A lot of people that start rotations, they don't really get any expectations. So they're kind of lost when they come in. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about good stuff to do in the lab, what to do when you start getting ready for graduation, and then what to expect actually working in the field. So um, I am the program director of this program. So if you have any questions when you're getting ready to take your exams, getting your license, um, just shoot me an email and I can help you. Um, but this should help kind of guide you through the process. So um, with each rotation, it's gonna be completely different depending on what facility you go to. Um, Cause there are reference labs, there are hospital labs. Um, some labs have one person doing four different departments. Some are very specialized. So sometimes the blood bank will be by itself. Sometimes it'll be part of the core lab. So it is completely dependent on what location you go to. Um, and the way they handle students is different too. Some people don't let you touch anything. They just want you to shadow them the whole time. Some people will show you how to do stuff and then they will shadow you for the rest of the time. Um, they might give you old samples to rerun. Uh, so it's gonna be completely different everywhere you go. So expect anything. But um, just to keep in mind, we are experiencing huge, huge, huge staffing shortages. And the burnout right now is very, very bad. So normally we love having students and we do want students right now because we need help, but everyone is so burned out right now. So people might be more testy than normal. So just keep that in mind. Um, try to understand that they have a job to do in addition to training you. So you are not their first priority, like doing their job is their first priority. So um, the other thing is all your rotations are potentially your future job. So think of it as an extended job interview. If they like you, then they're gonna want you to come back. Like that's it, like you're hired. Um, and if they don't like you, then pretty much you could be blacklisted from that facility. So keep that in mind. Um, your behavior, like it, if you're going to be consistently late to your internships, they're going to be like, mm, this is not a reliable person. I'm, I don't want to hire them. So just keep that in mind. Don't burn bridges. Um, Take notes when people are telling you things. Because we are so burned out, we hate repeating things over and over again. So please take notes. Like if someone is telling you this is important, write it down. Um, it might not make sense to you, but write it down. And then maybe at the end of the day, it will make sense to you. Um, so what you should do when you first get there, um, figure out who is going to be your primary contact or your primary trainer. Uh, some people will do it so that you are with one person the whole rotation. And sometimes it's going to be a different person every day. Um, but, and sometimes the supervisor might be your primary contact and they might be who you see in the morning or at the beginning of the shift and they will tell you what to do every day. So just figure out when I arrive, who do I talk to so that you know what is expected of you. Um, and Ask things like, so if they give you something to do, um, talk to them about when you should take breaks, when you should take your meal breaks, uh, what if they give you a task to do, do they want you to go talk to them when you get done with it, or do they want you to study or read SOPs? Um, do they want you to keep going back to them, or can't? are they busy and they just want you to find other stuff to do? So just ask, because it's gonna be different everywhere you go. Um, if they say, do this test, 
then say, okay, when I get done with this, if you're not available, what would you like me to do after it? Um, and also keep in mind, Florida is very strict record, um, regarding what trainees can do. Um, trainees cannot work as lab techs. So they can't say, oh, here's how you run this instrument. I'm leaving. You, you can't do their job for you. You cannot report any results. Um, and if you are dealing with any actual patient samples, there needs to be someone watching you at all times if that result is going to be reported. Um, so you won't get your trainee license if you're not registered. So that doesn't really apply to this. But yeah, basically someone needs to be watching you if you're working on actual patient samples. There are cases like in blood banking, after a sample has been tested and reported, they might give you an old sample to work on, which is great because you can play, you can mess up and there's nothing that's gonna be affected because it's already done. Um, but, and if you're ever in a situation where you're uncomfortable and they're asking you to do something that you don't think is right, um, then you can let me know because you should not be reporting any results on your own. Um, keep in mind dress code. So ask what they want you to wear. Some locations like Mayo wants you to wear a specific color of scrub. Uh, most locations don't care. Um, most locations, scrubs are fine. Business casual is fine if you want to. Um, as long as you're meeting the safety code. So closed toed shoes, your hair up, um, and that's basically it. Um, closed toed shoes are the big thing. Not anymore, okay. I don't think. <laughs> um, yeah. Like a small facility might, but I don't think Shans cares. Uh, Life South doesn't care um, because we're not really seen by patients. Maybe for your phlebotomy rotation, they might care because you're seeing patients, but um, I don't think so anymore. And if they do, um, they should tell you ahead of time, like you have to cover all tattoos or whatever. But um, I don't think that's really a thing anymore. Luckily, thank goodness. When I started my rotations, I had to take all my piercings out, cover all tattoos. And um, luckily our dress code at Life South changed like three years ago. Um, you're welcome, everyone. Um, <laughs> so yes, um, we can do our jobs no matter what we look like. So yes, the times are changing, luckily. Um, but um, so etiquette, basically help wherever you can. Um, like restocking stuff. When people are short staffed and they're running around like crazy working three different benches, restocking tips, restocking tubes, doing little things is very helpful. So if there's nothing for you to do at the end of the day, you can ask whoever you're working with, hey, is, can I help restock anything? Can I help refill reagents or do anything? And uh, that will be very appreciated. Um, be self-aware. Uh, so some people will just walk up to you and start asking you questions and you could be in the, you could be on the phone calling in a critical result. You could be on the phone with the doctor answering questions. So just be aware before you start talking to someone, like if they're sitting there doing a manual diff counting, you don't want to interrupt them. Just make sure you say like, is it okay? Do you have a second for me to talk to you? Um, so just be aware. Uh, a lot of time people cannot drop everything they're doing to answer a question. So if they're in the middle of something time critical, just make sure like, if you're busy right now, can I come back in five minutes? Or can you come find me when you have a minute? 
Um, return benches how you found them. So in most labs, you are not going to have a dedicated desk. Like you're going to share it um, if you have different. You're going to have like a day, evening, and night shift. You're going to share that bench. So if it's restocked and beautiful when you get there, make it restocked and beautiful when you leave. Um, it is extremely frustrating when you come into your bench and there is blood all over your bench. It's, it's not stocked. And the first thing you have to do when you get there is restock everything. So keep that in mind. Um, and always, always, always clean up blood at the end of your shift. Like you should never leave a bloody mess all over wherever you're working. Um, so having empathy for, this is mostly empathy for your other techs. Um, leave things how you would want to find them. Like don't leave a mess. And uh, also empathy for our jobs. Our jobs are extremely important. Um, so just keep in mind that test that you're doing, it could be your spouse, your child, your parents. So you wanna pay attention to it and keep that in mind. Um, yeah, like we are a very important career. So don't let nurses or doctors talk down to you. Know what you're doing, be confident that you know what you're doing and um, take pride in your career. Uh, if you use the last of something, let someone know. Uh, because it's very annoying when you go to get a reagent and there's none left. You're, the policy is usually if you open the last of something, let someone know so that they can reorder. Um, if you make a mistake, let someone know. Um, you're expected to make mistakes in your internships and as a new graduate, uh, that's how you learn things. Like everyone makes mistakes, never hide mistakes. Um, that is the big problem. If you own up to a mistake, you're going to be fine. If you try to hide a mistake, that is when you have issues. So hiding a mistake can sometimes get you fired. So do not hide mistakes. Um, just own up to it because a lot of times they're very easy to solve and you get to learn a lesson from it. So don't be scared when you make a mistake. Just ask like, how do I fix this? And how do we move on? If you break something, don't hide it. <laughs> um, sometimes instruments are finicky, so they might have a special way to program it or touch it. So if you think something's broken, just ask someone about it because um, they probably know, oh, you just can't touch that button or whatever. So let people know if you think something is broken so then um, it can be fixed or they can tell you how to use it appropriately. Um, be aware of your surroundings. Um, maintain your voice level. Like some labs are like big open rooms. So if you're a loud talker, um, you can be very disruptive to the people around you. Um, in general, don't take phone calls in the lab, personal phone calls. Like if you need to take a phone call, just step out. Uh, usually there's a break room or a locker room or something. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind your noise level. Timers, a lot of things we do have timers. Um, some people are very particular. Lab people in general, a lot of lab people are very introverted and a lot of lab people are very quirky. So they might get annoyed by things very easily. So turn off your timer if you're sitting there and it's in front of you, don't let it just keep going because people are gonna be like, what is wrong with you? Turn off your timer. Um, and at the same time, don't touch other people's timers. If they step out to go to the bathroom and their timer goes off, don't turn it off. Like they need to know that their timer went off so that when they get back, they don't think, oh, my sample is still incubating and it really went off 10 minutes ago. Or if you just need to turn off the timer, let them know as soon as they get back to their bench, your timer went off. Um, and the stuff that we've gone through already, um, document correction, 
always a single line through the error date initial never try to hide anything and never ever ever use white out like you will be written up in an inspection if you use white out on any document um, concurrent documentation is extremely important always document things as they're being performed so whether it's reading a reaction when you're calling a critical um, any documentation you want to be documenting it at the same time because if you didn't document it, it didn't happen. And ink, um, most places will have their own policy, which is usually blue or black indelible ink. So never pencils, um, never. When I was a baby tech, I used to love using green and purple pen and I got in trouble because when you make copies, it is not um, easy to read. So that is why you always want to leave, use blue or black. Um, one of the labs I worked in was a very manual lab, the um, transplant HLA lab at Shands. And they, we were only allowed to use blue ink because then we knew which was the original and which was the copy. So certain labs will have certain rules about ink. Um, so moving on. All of you are approaching graduation. So what do you need to do now? You wanna start thinking about your exam and getting your license and looking for jobs. So to apply for the ASCP exam, um, you can apply for the exam six weeks before your expected completion of the program. So that is the end of your rotations. That's not your graduation date, that's the end of your rotations. So when you have six weeks left of rotations, go ahead and apply for the ASCP. Um, I do not like the way the ASCP website is laid out. It's very not friendly. Um, so the easiest way to actually apply is scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and select the US certifications. And then you are taking route one, you went through a NACLS accredited program. So you will select Santa Fe College. So make sure you select Santa Fe College. When you apply, they will send an email to me um, asking me to approve you. So they do not need your transcripts at the time. If you're going through a NACLS accredited program, the only thing they need is the program director to say, yes, you are completing the program. So I say this because it is, um, well, okay. So about one month before the end of the program. So if you apply six weeks before, I get an email a couple of days after you apply. I approve you. And then about one month before your anticipated end of program, you'll get an email from ASCP saying you've been approved and they will give you a link to Pearson View. So you have to take the exam at a Pearson View Learning Center and um, you schedule your exam through them. So, I would recommend scheduling your exam very close to the end of program. Like don't wait a month. I'd say wait at maybe two weeks, study hard for two weeks and take the exam. Like everything is fresh in your mind. You're just gonna lose it if you wait. Um, applying for your Florida license. Um, you can also apply for your Florida license around that time. You will go to the Florida Department of Health website and there's an apply for license. It will take you to this MQA online services. Um, so if you applied for your trainee license through online, you'll already have an account. So you'll use your same account. If you did not, if you just did it on paper, then you will need to create an account. Do not lose your sign-on information because you have to renew your license every two years. So you will need 
that log on information every two years to renew your license. So you want to request your transcripts as soon as possible. It's never too early. You can do it right now. You just want to make sure this box send after graduation posted is checked. And then as soon as your graduation is posted, they will send your transcripts. Um, you will need to send, send them to ASCP and Department of Health. So you'll need to request two transcripts. You can do that right now so you don't forget about it later. Um, and the reason it's so important to get this done as soon as possible is ASCP is a nightmare right now. So is Florida because everyone's short staff. So they are now saying they're taking up to 30 or 60 business days. It was 30 business days before and now it's 60. So they don't need those transcripts for you to take your exam. So sometimes you'll take your exam and they hold your results until they get your transcripts. So the sooner you get your transcripts to them, the better, because you cannot get your Florida license until you have your ASCP results. So keep that in mind. And this is on their website. Like, do not contact them in the first 60 days. Do not send duplicate transcripts in the first 60 days. You just have to wait. So the sooner you send them, the better. And um, the same is true for Florida. Florida is a mess. So the sooner you get everything to them, the better. This is how you can write your credentials after you pass the ASCP exam. So your first name, last name, you are now a medical laboratory scientist. And if you take the exam now, you are required to participate in continuing maintenance. So you have to include the CM after your credentials. Um, that means that every three years you have to take continuing education or you lose your certification. <laughs> so what to expect? Um, you are the newbie, so you are likely to get the least desirable shifts, which is often night shift, weekends, and holidays. Um, that's not always true. Sometimes you just get very lucky, but don't expect that. Um, it's very likely that you're going to get not a great shift. Um, night shift is not all bad. I worked night shift whenever I graduated, and it was great because you normally get shift differential, and that helped me pay off my loans very quickly. Um, so it's not all bad. It's a very good experience sometimes. Uh, I felt like it made me more independent because you're working by yourself, so you have to make decisions. You also, I didn't wanna call my supervisor or a medical director in the middle of the night. So that forced me to look for solutions. So I feel like it was a really great experience to work night shift, um, but some people have a very hard time working night shift on their body, um, getting used to it. So it's not for everyone. Um, so when you're newbie, learn from other people's mistakes. Um, if you see someone else getting written up for doing something wrong, keep that in mind and don't do the same thing. Um, follow your SOPs. Uh, SOPs are in place for a purpose to protect patient safety, to make sure the tests are performed correctly. Um, chain of command is important to know. Um, always start at the bottom of the ladder. So if you have a lead tech, a supervisor, a manager, you work your way up the ladder, but always start with whoever you are reporting to. Um, you don't wanna just jump to going to the lab director. Um, some issues, if they are HR related, 
may bypass the chain of command, but those are, it's a case by case kind of thing. But just keep that in mind. Um, you don't wanna make your supervisor upset by just bypassing them and going directly to the manager. So just keep that in mind. Um, never, ever, ever falsify documentation. Um, that has very, very serious implications, um, including immediate termination. You could even lose your license. You worked very hard to get here, so do not do that. Um, and that could be very little things like we've fired people because like every day we do heat block QC to make sure your heat block is working correctly. And we found that we thought someone wasn't checking the heat block. So we turned the heat block off and that person documented that they did the heat block QC and they were fired that day because they falsified that documentation. Because what do we use the heat block for? Our 37 degree incubation. So if the heat block is not working correctly and you're reporting a negative antibody screen, you can miss clinically significant antibodies. So just because it seems like a very minor thing it can mean a very serious reaction, chain reaction can happen from that. So never ever falsify reactions or falsify documentation. Um, we talked about schedule expect expectations. Um, the other thing is overtime. We are working in the medical field. We're in healthcare. So a lot of times you have to work overtime you might not leave. If you're scheduled 7 to 3.30, you might not leave at 3.30 every day. You might have to stay until five o'clock or later. Um, so just expect that. Um, get used to writing everything in military time. Understand military time. Midnight is zero hundred. I've had multiple people, I schedule them through midnight and they don't show up because they don't understand what midnight is which blows my mind, but um, just make sure you understand military time. Um, so learning from your own mistakes too, um, goes back to being accountable for your actions. Um, sometimes mistakes happen. Sometimes you will be written up, we'll have a deviation. That doesn't mean it's not a horrible thing. People think when you're written up, it means a bad thing. Sometimes it is a bad thing, but sometimes that's not your fault. Um, when a mistake occurs, that organization should, patient care should always be the primary concern. So if something occurred, you want to look at why did this happen? Is the SOP not written clear enough? Uh, is our training program not good enough? Did this person not get the training they needed? Is there something missing in the computer system that we need to add a checkpoint or we need to add something to stop this from happening? So just because something happened, it doesn't mean that it's your fault or you're in trouble for it. Um, you, we look at things as a whole. How can we improve this situation? Um, and something that I have learned over the years um, that I think is good to be aware of is if you feel scared or you hate doing a particular test or working a particular bench, it probably just needs means you need more practice at that bench to be more comfortable. Um, when I worked in transplant, um, we did donor cross matches. And I hated doing them. Um, and it was just because I didn't do them enough. So I wasn't super confident in my testing ability. So I was like, I just need to do this more. So I volunteered to do them as much as possible. And then I felt better about it. So keep that in mind. Um, if you feel scared to do something, do it more until you feel good about it. Job searches. So it's never too early to start looking for jobs. Um, you can sign up for like job alerts on LinkedIn, Indeed, Simply Hired. 
Um, you can go in and put in the area that you're looking for. So if you you don't want to stay in Gainesville, you can sign up for Jacksonville's job alerts or wherever you want to go. Um, keep in mind, it may be under medical technologist, clinical lab scientist, or medical lab scientist. Um, and that's a whole nother subject. We are really trying to um, standardize the title. So, ASCP is asking everyone to start using medical laboratory scientists instead of saying med tech, because um, med tech isn't really relevant to what we do anymore, which I'm going to post this and some other information in announcements. Um, but yes, uh, so when you're looking for a job, you want to look at the schedule, the shift diff, what PTO you get. Uh, how often are their pay increases? Are they based on performance or time with the company? Do you get cost of living increases? Um, and the pay is not the only thing. Um, the benefits add up too. So your base pay might be lower, but the benefits may be much better. So you just want to look at everything. It's not just base pay. Um, like some people will have tuition reimbursement. Uh, so if you're interested in going to grad school, you might want to focus on looking for a job that has tuition reimbursement program. Um, some places have student loan payoff. So um, like if you work for a non-for-profit, um, you'll automatically get your student loans paid off after 10 years. So that might be something you want to keep in mind. Um, be very careful with sign-on bonuses. Some places will pay you $15,000 up front, but you're signing a contract for three years. And a lot of places that do that, do that because it's a miserable place to work. So keep that in mind, I'm serious. Like I've seen a lot of people on like forums say, like, I hate my job so much, but I'm stuck here because I took $15,000. So I would advise if you take a sign-on bonus, put it in a savings account and don't touch it until you know that you love that job and you can get through your contract. Because um, hating your job is not cool. Like you do not want to dread going to work every day. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and then do you want to specialize? Do you want to be a generalist? Um, some people want to work in a core lab. Some people want to go straight to specializing. So. Um, room for advancement. Do you want to advance? Do you want to be a manager one day? Do you want to be an administrator? Or do you want to specialize? There's a lot of different things to think about. And you might not know starting off. Um, I never thought I would want to be in a management role when I started. And here I am. So uh, you never know where it's going to take you. Job applications. Um, I know a lot of people do not like writing cover letters, but when we get job applications, everyone's resume looks the same when you're coming out of school. So your cover letter is the chance for you to say why you are awesome. So let that hiring manager know your strengths right there. So this is kind of an example of how you can format a cover letter. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can really say a lot in your cover letter and it will get the attention of your manager. If you do your internship somewhere that you really like, make sure you get that manager's email address um, because sometimes the HR department sits on applications and the manager of the lab doesn't see them. They don't know that you applied. So if you get their email address and you apply and you don't hear anything for a while, you can email the lab manager and say, hey, I applied. So just checking to see what's going on. And then sometimes they say, oh, HR never sent me your application. So just keep that in mind. Um, HR slows down the process sometimes greatly, depending on how big the facility is. Um, job interviews. Um, 
So if you do your internship somewhere and you are awesome and they loved you and they call you in for a job interview, sometimes they're gonna offer you the job right there. So I would take your social security card, driver's license, your license, your resume, copies of your transcripts to your job interview so that if they say, you're hired, can I take you to HR right now? You have all your stuff ready and you can get started. Um, usually you'll have to do a drug test. They'll do a background check. They'll do a license verification, um, which if you have a copy of your license, then you have that taken care of. And some places require a reference check. So keep that in mind. Um, most will ask you for three references and like our HR department will not move forward until they've actually had contact with those three references. Um, for people that don't have any working experience and you just have school experience, um, feel free to use me as a reference. I would like it if you gave me a heads up if you're gonna use me as a reference because I've gotten phone calls and I'm like, I don't remember this person. So um, <laughs> I'll still do the reference, but it'll take me a little bit to jog my memory. So if you give me a heads up, then I can be like, okay, yeah, I remember you. Um, so yes, give me a heads up. Um, and then a side note, if you are planning to go to graduate school, um, it is really nice if you ask your manager to write a reference letter for you. If you just write the reference letter for them and talk about how awesome you are and say, hey, I made a template for you, feel free to use it. And then it's more likely to get done because managers are really busy. So asking them to just pull the reference letter out of nowhere, um, they might be like, yeah, I don't have time for that. So it's way more likely if you're just like, hey, Here's something that you could send, and then they just sign it and send it. So keep that in mind. Um, so continuing education. Um, ASCP and Florida both require a continuing education. Um, don't wait until the last minute to do it, because um, it's going to stress you out if you wait until the last minute. Just do it over time. Um, what I do is I make a folder for each year to save all my CEU certificates in because, of course, it can't be easy. ASCP is every three years and Florida is every two years. So they're not on the same schedule. So if you do it by year, it kind of helps you figure out which ones you can use for which. Um, there are a ton of free CEUs, so don't ever pay for CEUs unless there's just something you really want to see or go to. Um, a lot of places like Shands and Life South, they pay for Media Lab, and you can knock out all your CEUs through Media Lab. But um, usually vendors have free um, webinars. So like hematology vendors, chemistry vendors, a lot of blood bank vendors, they'll have webinars. And if you can't watch it when it's live, usually they have them stored on their website. So you can go and watch it afterwards and you still get the CEU credits for it. And a lot of them are very helpful because um, the great thing about this field is it is changing so rapidly because there's new instruments all the time. Um, there's new drugs all the time we have to worry about that might cause interference with our tests. So it's always evolving. So that's why we need continuing education to make sure that we're staying current. Um, so for Florida license, um, they track it through CE broker, which is it, is actually really good. It used to be you had to turn in all your paper certificates and it was kind of a mess. Everything thing took a really long time. And now um, they use a third party CE broker. You sign up and as you do your CEUs, you upload your certificate there so that when you go to renew your license, they just check with CE broker and say, do they have all the credits they need? CE broker says yes. And then Florida says, give me money and here's your renewal. Um, for Florida, you need 24 credits. If you're a generalist, you'll need um, credits in every area. So you'll need some chemistry, some hematology, blah, 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 everything. If you're a supervisor, 
you will also need supervisory credits, um, and those are usually super fun. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you have any specialties too, like um, HLA, you have to have some in HLA, molecular, you have to have molecular. Um, but CE Broker basically tells you what you need to do. And if you have Media Lab, it's really easy because they have it broken out by section. So you know, okay, I'm gonna do that. I'll pick one from chemistry and one from human biology and just go down the list and just don't wait until the last minute. Um, what I used to do with um, my friends is we would take our laptops over to World of Beer and sit on Media Lab and get all of our CEUs done in one day. So that was fun. But um, for ASCP, because it's every three years instead of every two, you need 36 credits. So um, for that, definitely do not wait until the last minute because that is a lot of credits to do. Um, and they are so nice. They give you an email warning one year before it's due. Like, hey, remember me, don't forget to do your CEUs. So just keep that in mind. Um, don't forget about it. Don't wait until the last minute because your Florida license, um, it expires August 31st every two years. So if you let your license expire, you're fired. Like you cannot work. Um, so it's not ideal for your manager or for you. So don't do that. Make sure you are renewing it on time. Um, and I just wanted you guys to be aware. Um, the clinical lab is not for everyone. It is sometimes high stress, sometimes crazy hours. Work-life balance doesn't exist sometimes. <laughs> Um, it's really, I, I feel like everything in healthcare, you kind of have to have a passion for it. Um, there are lots of other options though. And these other options, they love MLS because we have good lab foundation. We're good with details. Um, so you can go into industry and work for like vendors, test development, R and D. Um, there's like, Sysmix or your hematology analyzer. You can be a tech specialist, a field service engineer. You can work in marketing or sales if that's your thing. Um, but if you like travel, um, working for vendors is always an option. Um, for research, there's always things like clinical trials, there's biotech stuff, working for the CDC, working for some pharmaceutical companies. Um, in like large hospitals, there's administrative jobs like infection control, policy analyst, um, like QA jobs, um, test utilization, safety officer, stuff like that. Um, a lot of lab people go into like IT stuff for like your laboratory information system, programmers, managers, system analysts, if that's your thing. Um, then there's education. You can always come back here and teach. We always need teachers. Um, there's education coordinators within large hospitals, um, clinical instructors, professors. You can always be like a science teacher in a high school if you really wanted to do that. Um, it'd be a very high pay cut to do that. But if that's your calling, go for it. Um, and then if you're really good at what you do, you can leave and be a consultant. Um, they make quite a lot of money. If you have a very good grasp of like high level stuff and how things fit together, um, consulting is a very good career. Um, usually you need lots of experience to understand the way things work well enough to be a good consultant. Um, and then there's lots of professional organizations like ASCP, AABB, um, all kinds of different jobs, um, like standard writing, um, stuff like that. There's state licensing boards that need people to review applications, stuff like that. Um, textbook authors, technical writers. There's other lab tests. Um, so you can be, or lab, lab positions, um, there's travel techs, 
forensic labs, vet labs. Um, there's like Doctors Without Borders for med techs. Um, obviously you can join the military. There's environmental testing, agriculture, FDA labs. So there's quite a bit of career options. So if you get into a lab and you're like, I hate this, just know there's lots of things you can do with this degree. And you can always go on and be a doctor or go on and be a pathologist assistant, physician's assistant. There's lots of other things to move on to. Um, so a lot of people join the Discord. So just keep that in mind. I, I need to go and add a bunch of study guides, but I did start posting some job application or job posts, but yeah, if you wanna join that and then you stay connected. So when I post study guides, you can see it. And everyone else is feel free to post whatever you wanna post. Um, the CLS survey, every year we send out a graduate survey. Please don't ignore it um, because to maintain accreditation, we have to report on a few things. So we need to report on how many people graduated and how many people have jobs in the field and how many people pass their exams. So the main thing I need to know from you is, are you working in the field? And it will also um, ask if you have any recommendations for the program, um, how it can be improved, what you would like to see done differently, stuff like that. And that is it. Does anyone have any questions?